Et ma peine, c'est de voir ma question, ma préoccupation. Est-ce que réellement il y a quelqu'un qui veut mettre fin au génocide des Congolais, au, au viol des femmes congolaises et des enfants congolais Est-ce que réellement il y a quelqu'un qui veut mettre fin à cette histoire-là uh, My preoccupation is, is there anybody who really want to put an end to the genocide in the Congo, to uh, the women being violated, being raped, and, to, and also to the children. Is there really anybody who wants to put an end to that? Well, I think everybody in this room would agree that they'd like to put an end to the sexual violence in the Congo. Do you understand English well? Okay, you just have a harder time speaking it. Merci. So I think everybody in the room would like to see an end to the violence in the Congo or an end to the violence in Africa. The question is, how do we do it? What do we believe? Why do we believe what we believe? And what is our motivating factor to take action? And when we have a motivating fact factor to take action, what action do we take? What action can everybody in this room take to stop the violence against women in the Congo? Clearly, Eve Ensler believes that she's created a network of organizations that are stopping the violence against women in the Congo. But the people perpetrating violence against women in the Congo are not Congolese soldiers per se. They are not. Eve Ensler actually published an article that said basically every Congolese man is a rapist. No, every Congolese man is not a rapist. That's a simplified narrative that Eve Ensler uses because of her white supremacist perspective. She's done some fantastic work. And at the same time, she's cover, helping to cover up. That's what white supremacy does. It creates spokespeople who cover it up. Now, what can we actually do to stop the, the violence against women in the Congo? Arrest Paul Kagame. Indict and arrest Paul Kagame. The indictments are there. Arrest him. I mean, it's very simple on a certain level. It's not about Omar Bashir. It's not about we can't do anything. We don't know what to do. We could also start get people to start naming the people behind the war and the violence. So Banro Corporation is one of the biggest corporations in Eastern Congo. It's a gold corporation out of Canada. Banro officials have freedom to come and go from Canada. They have vast concessions in the Congo. Never worked anywhere else. And they're, and they're right in the heart of the bloodletting and the raping and the killing. And the weapons are continued to be surprised. AFRICOM is all over Eastern Congo and the weapons are still being provided to Gagame. How do we stop that? The only way we can stop it is by giving our lives to the cause. So my teacher, one of my teachers said to me, he said to me and a large group of people, are you going to sacrifice are you going to sacrifice your children to save your body? So we're taught to believe that we can't make a difference as an individual, but everybody in this room can make a huge difference as an individual if you believe in yourself. But as soon as you start taking the paycheck and silencing your voice. As soon as you start being, believing that you don't have the power, then we, we're, it's lost. So everybody in this room, I mean, we all have the power to do this in a phenomenal way. There's a guy who made a film about the Congo called uh, Kisangani Diaries. And he made it in Zaire. Uh, he filmed it during the butchery of the Hutu refugees. And for some strange reason, this French guy named Hubert Sauber got the idea that what he had been told or what he had, you know, what everybody else was saying was not true. And he made a film about how the, all these Hutus were being butchered and nothing like it exists on the planet. It's called Kisangani Diaries and it's, I, I, I've, I thought I had seen the whole film, but it turns out I've seen like 20 minutes or so and it's like an hour and a half. And uh, one of the guys that worked with Hubert, is, Hubert Sauper is here tonight, Nick Flynn. And he's a great writer as well and he could tell you stories about this. And anyway, the point is Nick Flynn got this bizarre idea that this, the Hutus were not the killers that we've been told, and he decided to make a film about it against all everything else that was being said in the world. Howard French didn't have the courage to do that. Howard French gave up and abandoned the Hutus, and since then, since 1996, we're talking 10 million people dead. Howard French sold out, and I think he's going to suffer for that. Anyway, the point is, we have to invent new ways to do it, and nobody's going to tell you how to do it, and nobody's going to tell you how to do it, and nobody's going to tell me how to do it. But if I think somebody's going to tell me how to do it, I'm never going to be able to do it. If I'm waiting for somebody to come along and tell me what to do, which is the problem with Americans. Americans need somebody to come along and say, you've got to do it this way or that way or this way. They think someone's going to come along and save them. 
It's much easier to just go home and sit down in front of the TV. I'm sure that was a very insufficient answer, but that is my answer for the moment. If Amy Goodman would start carrying the truth about this on a more regular basis. So here's what you can do. You can get in touch with the writer, the, the editor of uh, In These Times. How many people read In These Times? The editor of In These Times will not touch this story. He especially won't touch it if it has anything to do with me. The editor of The Nation, they won't touch the story. They have interests. They give you some piece of it. What are interests of the nation connected to the story? Well, it's connected to Henry Kissinger. Kissinger is connected to the International Crisis Group. International Crisis Group created the Enough Project. Henry Kissinger has connections to the power structure in the Congo, blah, blah, blah. Every single media outlet in America is basically serving up this nasty story. Almost nobody has told the truth about what happened in the Congo and Rwanda and Uganda. Black Star News is one, and, and the, Milton Obote would be, I'm sorry, Milton um, Alamadi would be another great guy to come and have speak here because he's continually challenging. So he's been labeled by the Kagame government as, uh, as one of their targets. I've been labeled on their hit list. They created a, a, a hit list was leaked. They had created this hit list of people they needed to eliminate in the world and my name was on there. And, uh, and uh, that's what they're doing. And they're targeting refugees in the United States. And the courts are trying asylum cases and sending back innocent people to their deaths at this very moment. So there are all kinds of things that we as individuals can do. And the first thing we could do is, you know, work together. But it's really hard for us to all agree to do that. <laughs> it's we, it's no. You have to stop. You have to change the do what you have to do. You have to take a step. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't go to you. You have to forget. We, we have a few more questions uh, so I did to go talk through. Too long. No, no, you're great. And uh, Is everybody okay? We go through a few more questions and then... I mean, uh, I, I would just like to add to what you were saying regarding the propaganda and all the stuff that, uh, uh, you know, that the movies, you know, the Hollywood industry, it's, a, it's like a, some symbiotic relationship with all this propaganda too, you know, reinforced through the war movies. Like, for example, Tears of the Sun with Bruce Willis, I think it was. And like that, so, 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 you know, I mean, so many other movies. Black Hawk Down. Right, I mean all those, you know, uh, Black Hawk Down, something like that, you know. I mean the um, American hero image, you know, the good and evil, you know, good and bad. Anyway, uh, but uh, I wanted to say, you know, over the last four years, 62% uh, of, uh, you know, uh, arms, you know, um, arms sales has been increased in the northern part of Africa um, through the U.S. In industrial military complex. And uh, I would just like to have your, you know, to know your opinion, your insights regarding the, you know, all these, um, you know, armed cells, you know, uh, and also uh, the so-called Africom, you know, uh, presence. And, and, you know, uh, what, what, what's your opinion on that? You know, what, I mean, My opinion is that if you're on an airplane flying from Dallas to Los Angeles and the stewardess gets up or the pilot gets on the thing and announces to the entire American, mostly, you know, passenger list, that uh, there's a couple of American military on the plane who have just f returned from Iraq and we all need to give them a round of applause. That's your moment of entry. You stand up and, and, and refuse to applaud and also make a statement. But we're afraid of doing that. So the stuff is going on all around us. I think the, Ameri I think the United States is going to collapse. So I all we can do at this point is, you know, Gandhi said everything you do will be meaningless, but you must, but you must do it. So that's the place that I operate from. The United States is going to collapse. Why am I bothering to make a film about the butchering of the Hutus in the Congo? You know, I need to start thinking about more realistically, right? Well, yeah, but on another level, um, it's like, you know, it's that question, are you going to give your, sacrifice your children to save your body? The, the reason I answered the question the way I did is because where I live in Massachusetts, there's two or three arms company right near me, Remington and, and uh, Colt, Remington and Colt and Winchester. And, and, and in Connecticut, Save the Children, based in Connecticut, you know. And who works for these companies? Uh, my sister-in-law works for United Technologies. Casper Weinberger was one of the directors. And, and uh, who's that other guy who said, I'm in charge here? General Alexander Haig, who said, everything you, every, you can let them march all they want as long as they pay their taxes. So if you want to make a difference, you don't pay your taxes. But as soon as you don't pay your taxes, you've got, you've got other problems. So I don't pay my taxes, but I can't own land and property. I can't get a mortgage, and I don't have a car. I don't want a car, but 
Yeah, exactly. So, so you know, on a certain level, there's nothing we can do. It's going to collapse in and of its own self. But the, the only thing, and, every, and then on another level, we can do everything we have the power to do as long as we believe in ourselves and start speaking about this. And, you know, it's a, it's a very insufficient answer, and I apologize. But the weapons are being shipped in at a phenomenal rate. More and more U.S. military are being trained every day, I think. And they're just, you know, atrocities around the world are horrendous. The, the whole WikiLeaks thing, is that a promising development? It seems like it. But you know what? When NBC announces that WikiLeaks said this and that, I know for a fact that that's not what WikiLeaks released. I know that what WikiLeaks actually released was far more damning than what NBC is telling me. So anybody who pays any attention funding these institutions of power, NBC, TV, National Public Radio, if you buy the New York Times, if you read the New York Times, you're contributing to your own mental illness. So what you could do is organize a protest against the New York Times. If the New York Times sat on the sidewalk for a week and nobody bought it, the world would change because everybody reads the New York Times, you know? So I think, you know, the problem is information and awareness and, and uh, how do you wake up? It's really The Matrix, the movie The Matrix. You've got yeah, these people, exactly. everybody walking around asleep, you know? And every now and then, you know, you people have decided for one reason or another that you're going to come here, listen to this lunatic tonight, and who knows what you're going to think when you walk not out all, of the room. Not at all, not at all. Hey, Keith, <laughs> also, you know, I mean, two days ago we have this company, presumably very well reputed, it's called um, Transparency Org. They, they came up with this report, you know. Uh, Transparency uh, International produces reports about the, right. the most corrupt countries in the world and exactly. the least corrupt. It's yeah. just nonsense. Yeah, it's all nonsense because just, if you look at the report, the United States uh, actually improved, you know, it, it improved in the corruption level. And also, yeah. and also, you know, all this scale, I mean, uh, not of this stuff that you're talking about, you know, how the corporations have to do with all this, the, the money involved. It's never part of the dis discourse, never. Transparency International, you just go look at who their funders are. Anybody who wants one of my cards, it has my website on it. And if you don't know my website, I haven't mentioned it. It's allthingspast.com. And that's my old website.